Welcome to Scanner School. My name is Phil Lichtenberger, and this podcast is always here to teach you everything you need to know about the scanner radio hobby. Before we get started today, I want to remind you that the session notes for this week's podcast can be found online at scannerschool.com slash session 97. Yeah, 97. We're just about at episode 100, and I have a favor to ask of you. I'm trying to get to 100 five-star reviews in iTunes. We're at 73 right now. So if you could do me a favor and if you could jump over to iTunes and give me an honest review, that would be great. And why am I asking for reviews here? Because the more reviews that we have on the podcast, the easier it is for somebody looking for a scanner radio podcast will find us. So if you go over to scannerschool.com slash iTunes, it'll take you over to iTunes where you can leave an honest review. Now, if you take a picture of that review and send it to me on Instagram at Scanner School, I will pick a winner uh, between now and the end of the year. And I'll give away a free consulting call and also a squelchy sticker pack. So again, go to scannerschool.com slash iTunes. Please leave me an honest review of the podcast and shoot me a screenshot at Instagram, Scanner School, and we'll pick a winner. That's it. Very easy. Thank you very, very much. Welcome to the Scanner School, a podcast dedicated to the scanner radio hobby. Class is about to begin. Here is your host, Phil Lichtenberger. Okay, so welcome back to Scanner School. If this is the first time you're listening to us, why don't you go ahead and click subscribe. This way you get all of the following podcasts, all the future podcasts delivered right to your podcast player without you having to do anything. It'll be automatically delivered to you every single Tuesday. Now, if you are a recent or a longtime listener of this podcast, you might have remembered back in session 81, I talked with Harrison Wilson about the dangers of scanning with commercial radios. And today we are kind of putting this into a realistic situation here. So a couple of weeks ago, There are about five or six people who were charged with using stolen radio IDs in the Ohio Marks P25 system. So I'm going to read a article that aired on uh, Channel 5 News over in Ohio. And again, I'll put a link to this article and also a link to the actual broadcasted news article they put on the air, uh, the segment of, of their news. Uh, this way you can kind of see for yourself the pile of radios that was confiscated and everything else. And now again, this isn't really a commentary podcast here. This is basically a beware and we'll go, we'll touch this on the end. So again, let me read to you the actual article that's on the news5cleveland.com website. And it says, Canton, Ohio, Five people have been charged following a year-long investigation into stolen radio IDs that could have placed first responders in danger, according to the Stark County Sheriff's Office. Now, according to the Sheriff's Office, six people were allegedly using stolen radio IDs to operate radios on encrypted channels on the Mark's radio system that first responders use. Authorities say that the radio IDs were pirated and then sold and distributed to unauthorized people to use. So I'm not going to go through who the named people are, where they're from, and their ages. But again, you can look at that and their mugshots on uh, news5cleveland.com. Again, link will be in the podcast session notes. Again, going back to the article here. So a sixth suspect has been identified, but the person remains at large. The sheriff's office stated the person's name has not been released. The sheriff's office stated that the individuals have each been charged with the following, engaging in a pattern of corrupt activity, aggravated theft, unauthorized use of a computer, cable, or telecommunications property, criminal simulation, and impersonating a peace officer. So last year, Sheriff George T. Mayer told News 5, it is critical that we do everything to ensure that the Marks radio system, which provides life-saving communication capabilities to our first responders is protected. Mayer pointed out that the clone radios used to access the encrypted channels could negatively impact first responders by blocking or clogging radio traffic, transmitting false information, or by ambushing officers participating in covert operations. 
Last October, the sheriff's office raided six homes and what business in the Canton area tied to the case. Authorities said nearly a dozen people were identified as a result of these raids who could be involved in cloning or selling radios capable of using police bands to monitor or transmit the broadcast. We are committed to holding these accountable who interfere with our emergency communications here in Stark County and across the state of Ohio, Mayor said. The arrests are another example of agencies working together for the safety of our community. We appreciate the cooperation of Ohio Marks, Motorola, and the Stark County Prosecutor's Office. So there's another related article that goes to the seven locations that were raided, but we're not going to jump into that. I just want to stick to this one article here, kind of break it apart and uh, go through it. So again, the warning here is that they're saying that this could have happened here, right? It says that obviously there were radios that were, uh, they're saying the IDs were pirated, sold and distributed. And uh, I'm looking for the actual paragraph here. It says mayor pointed out that the clone radios used access to encrypted channels could negatively in fact first respond by blocking or clogging radio traffic, transmitting false information or by ambushing officers participating in covert operations. So it's say that it could have been used for that, not that it was definitely used for that. But again, let's talk about what's going on here, right? Somebody got a radio. In theory, they they had a a PD radio, which again, if you look at the actual news report on this one, they, they were saying that a radio was actually stolen and they believe that that radio was actually used to clone into other radios. Now, if you look at the actual aired news segment, they had like a crate of radios, Whistler scanners, Baofeng radios, most of them being uh, Motorola radios, two-way radios. And again, the issue here is they're talking about stolen radio IDs. Can you actually steal a radio ID? I don't know if you can physically steal a radio ID. You can physically steal proprietary programming layouts that are inside of a radio. But the radio ID does belong to the agency who issues it, right? It belongs to the radio. Now, again, if you're going to put a commercial radio on a two-way radio system, it doesn't belong there to begin with, right? This is why we were saying, especially Harrison and I were talking about on session 81, that it is much safer, much, much safer to use a scanner when it comes to monitoring a commercial system, right? It's very simple. If you have a scanner in your possession, you're monitoring from whatever it is that you can receive. There's no worry about you having to sneak into encryption or to accidentally get onto a system, accidentally key up on it. More importantly, if you have a cloned radio ID and you turn your radio channel the actual legit radio ID is also going to change channels as well, okay? There's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes that you're not really aware of when you're using a commercial radio. And again, this is what we talked about on session 81. The point of this podcast is to show you that this is now on the radar, right? If you're out there using a two-way radio just to monitor a system, how is that going to look to somebody who is using it for public safety and has the same radio. Immediately, they're going to go, why do you have a radio like I do? It doesn't matter that you're just listening, okay, or that it's in inhibit mode or anything else. The point is, this is now on the radar. This is now five or six people, seven locations that have been raided. This is out there, right? So let's take a look at the Ohio Marks system. Now, the Ohio Mark system is a full statewide communications P25 phase one system. There are a bunch, a bunch of transmitter sites on this network. And there's even more talk groups on here. Okay, this is a huge statewide system. There is also encrypted talk groups on here. So again, I'm not going to speculate whether or not the users had radios with the encryption key in it and they were able to monitor encrypted talk groups. I'm not even talking about that. Okay. It's just the fact that they had a radio that was on a system that they were not supposed to be on. So this is why we're stressing out here, especially when I talked about session 81, use a scanner to listen to public safety trunk systems. You might know what you're doing, but again, if somebody sees that radio, it's going to raise a flag, especially in these days where it's, you know, see something, say something, right? These guys were obviously, they had a pile of radios. And for, let's just say, play devil's advocate here. Let's just say that they thought they knew what they were doing. Maybe they thought they had 
transmit inhibited. Maybe they thought they were just, they had a great side business. They basically said, oh, we got radios that we can clone and well, let's clone's bad word here. Let's just say we have radios that we built our own code plugs for based off of what we found out originally. And we're just selling these radios with the ability to monitor. In their eyes, let's just play again devil's advocate. It was no different than programming a scanner and selling a scanner with pre-programming information in it. They could have believed that that was what they were doing as well. In the eyes of the law, that's not what happened. So in the sake of being warned and learning from other people's mistakes, okay, just be aware. My advice to you is if you are looking to scan a trunk system, a public safety system that you have no right to be on, get a scanner. A scanner may not sound as nice. It may not look as nice. And some of you guys love to buff yourselves out and have the exact same equipment. I get it, right? It's There's nothing beats that 20 pound radio you have to you carry on your belt that has that really bassy audio on it and you know you can drop it and it won't break into a million pieces on you but again this is now on the radar okay so my advice again i just said it two or three times scan with the scanner scan with something that isn't going to have a transmitter and just be safe all right do the right thing and just keep your nose clean So this session of Scanner School is sponsored by East Coast Pagers. Now, East Coast Pagers is one of my online companies. So really quickly, Unication is blowing out the end of the year. Crazy deals here. Really quickly, if you buy 10 or more G-Series Pagers, that's a G1 through a G5, you'll get a free extended warranty. So that turns your two-year warranty into a five-year warranty. Now, you can stack this promo on the following two. If you buy 10 G1 pagers, you get one free. So buy 10, get one. Buy 20, get two. Buy 30, get three, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if you're in the market for a G4 or G5 pager, you get $100 off the MSRP. So that turns a G4 from $645 to $545 and a G5 from $745 MSRP to $645. Again, you can combine either one of these G1 or G4, G5 promos with the extended warranty and there's no limit. So contact me directly, phil at eastcoastpagers.com for uh, your best pricing and some extra bonuses just for you guys as well. Again, eastcoastpagers.com is the website and phil at eastcoastpagers.com is the best way to get a hold of me. All right, again, before we split for the week, I know this was a really short session, but uh, I just want to get to the point without beating a dead horse, to be honest with you. So again, if you wouldn't mind leaving me a honest review in iTunes, again, I'm looking for 100 five-star reviews by the end of the year. If you leave a snapshot of that in my Instagram DM, again, I'm at Scanner School. At the end of the year, we will pick a winner to win a free consulting call and also a sticker pack. Now, again, if you want a sticker pack, the best way to do so right now is to become a Patreon supporter. The $5 Patreon supporters do receive our brand new sticker packs. If you want to see the sticker pack, go ahead and check out my Instagram feed. I took some pictures and threw it on there as well. I want to thank our continued Patreon supporters, Craig Harper, Dan, Glenn Bryden, Guy Lee, James Felling, Jeff Bach, John Goldenberg, Ken Newberry, Kenneth Fowler, M.T. Bono, Mark Beebe, Raymond Hill, Ronnie Bach, Sal Marandola, Scott Vorder, Signals Everywhere, Stephen Sheffield, Todd Glendie, William Arcand. And I want to thank our newest Patreon supporter, Irvin Thibodeau. Irvin, thank you so much for your brand new a contribution to help keep Scanner School going. Now, if you want to help out Scanner School, you can go to scannerschool.com slash support. In there, I have links that uh, if you're buying from Amazon, all you gotta do is click on that link, then go do your shopping. Especially with Christmas around the corner, it's a great way to help support Scanner School and uh, it doesn't cost you anything extra to do that. If you're looking for a new scanner, go to scannerschool.com. Again, support. We have links to Scanner Master, so if you're looking for accessories or a new radio, even programming. And finally, if you need new software, we have a link to Butel. So again, everything we talked about today, as well as the two news articles that I was referring to, can be found in the session notes at scannerschool.com slash session 97. We're getting up to 100. I got a very, very cool surprise coming up right around the corner. So again, Scanner School is copyright 2019, Monitor Long Island, Inc. My name is Phil Lichtenberger, and this is Scanner School, where we teach you everything you need to know about the scanner radio hobby. We will catch you all again next Tuesday. 73 of a one.